And right now, uh, we are going to talk about financial awareness and the awareness of your personal data on different platforms. And in particular, the profit platform as their attempt to provide you with management of your own data on their platform. Currently, it's a prototype, but it sounds really interesting. About this topic, we're going to have uh, Peter, who is an open source enthusiast. And Peter, can you tell us something about yourself? Actually, so please give it up for Peter. Okay, thank you very much. Dobrý den, or po slovensky dobrý deň. So, few words maybe about me up there, but I also would like to add that I sometimes like to crack jokes, especially in front of huge crowds, but sometimes those jokes are funny only to me. Sorry if that happens here also. Uh, I'm interested in many things open, and uh, it seems quite a theme that each time I'm interested into something, then it's usually not very hot topic for everybody. Maybe that's why this huge crowd. But I will try to explain how it's, for example, what I'm going to, to talk about today, how it relates to, for example, open data, which I'm also keen of. So what will I talk about? First, I will introduce the project so that you know how it relates to financial literacy. Uh, I'll also explain a little bit about the platform and how it relates to the project and to the financial literacy and then uh, describe maybe our motivation why in such a project we are tackling also my data. And then I will try to explain a few things about the features themselves. So let me start with the project introduction. So those are the goals and uh, essentially the main goal is to help people around the world or within the European Union especially because the European Commission is funding the project to make them understand their finances better because we are living in quite complicated world and even though all the basics with the money management are quite simple, essentially a lot of people is getting them wrong. This is, for example, the actual results from a literacy mapping worldwide. Not every country is covered, but as you can see, the leaders are somewhere around 50%. So if in such literacy test you take the score that you are able to answer correctly all the three basic questions, then you are in a minority, actually. So let me explain what are the questions. Uh, Essentially, first two is, are based on very basic mathematics, and the last one is sort of uh, about probability. So who is roughly able to answer all those three questions correctly, then uh, it's actually a minority usually in his country or in his region. But it, that was a question, or you know the answers. Essentially, compound interest your way, compound interest as an inflation out of your way, and then there, there is one is how you actually make sure you are not risking by investing money in a single company. So what we are going or hopefully achieve is to make those percentages higher, that more people know the answers and more people know how to manage their money. Uh, few use cases about why it matters. So one of the major examples we are trying to tackle is that uh, right now, the times when your children took care of you and you didn't have to save some money for your retirement are over. So right now it's very hot topic to save for retirement. But how do you save properly for your retirement? That's one of the things we would like to teach the people. Or how to avoid losing a lot of money on typical let's say fraud scheme, maybe uh, like credit cards, for example, those are ways how to take a lot of money out of you because if you are not, uh, if you do not understand how it works, you simply pay and uh, you lose a lot of money this way. And of course, also day-to-day -day management of your expenses is very important. Again, the basics are very simple, but in reality, quite a lot of people do it wrong. So, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, we are preparing some uh, financial education content. 
which through which the people will learn the basic stuff about the finance and uh, a way how we decided to make it available to the general audience is uh, through a platform so a platform typical website imagine a typical website where you go come you will find something let's say for free you just take a look you can read the material and you can then leave maybe or you can register to the platform and then you can use the additional functionality like you can take the quizzes you can take the quizzes before you look at the education content, then you can take those quizzes again after you went through the education content and we will measure how you've improved, for example, and then make you a recommendation where to go further, what to read next and so on. So that's essentially the basic functionality of the platform. And uh, the key maybe differentiator with anything else would be that you are not going to learn just from the platform, from the content we are preparing, but we are also implementing stuff which should help you learn also from other people. So people will be able to upload their own educational videos and materials into the platform. There will be some, let's say, common social functions you can see on Facebook or some other social media so that we will be able to follow other users, we will be able to rate uh, their content, uh, exchange some comments and messages with them. So as to create the platform into an ecosystem and people can help each other learn more about this financial stuff. So our motivation towards my data. Uh, if we want to increase the financial literacy and we want to do it via the platform, we need quite a lot of users at the platform. So that's one motivation why we want to do it, to make it more appealing for people to come and use our platform. And how do we attract more users? Well, among other things, of course, my feature is just one piece of the bigger picture, so one of the key the motivation of, for this feature is that if people feel that they can trust the platform and they have control over the data they are putting into the platform, then it is more probable they will stay and they will provide some content. So that's the motivation, for example, for the My Data feature. Uh, other bigger picture for why we came up with this is that, uh, for example, me as Open Data Guy for quite some time, uh, is the relation between the my data and open data concepts plus another motivation which is essentially a law and will become enforced in may is gdpr uh, one speaker told about gdpr yesterday but i was not very able to follow so i'm not sure whether i'm going to contradict it or agree with him so let's dig first into the my data concept as derived from open data so if we have open data it's usually anonymous data and the philosophy for open data is that uh, this data should be available, used and reused by anyone. That's the main principle of open data, especially for governments if they are publishing data because we already paid them to create the data, so we should get it for free from the government. So let's stretch the parallel a little bit and we have a data about me. Me, you, you, everybody else, essentially personal data. And again, it should be freely able to use, reuse, and redistribute, but by me, because it's, this data is about me, it's personal information, so I should be able to do whatever I please to do with that. But of course, given that it is personal information, nobody should give it away to somebody without my approval. So my data for me, open data for everybody. That's the parallel. Uh, the main motivation comes from me. Laura James, that's not my idea. I simply read her blog and I like the idea and I'm very happy that now I can actually act on it, so that's very good. Uh, now GDPR, essentially the basic principles which GDPR is defining are to some degree aligned with the My Data philosophy, so personal information should be uh, Essentially, the basic principle, as I understand GDPR, is that your personal data, according to this law, is actually yours. As opposed to what was previously understood as a status quo, that if you put something to Facebook or Twitter, it's their data. And you have no say in how they will use it. So this regulation is turning the table and making you the owner of the data. Uh, of course, we can argue how effective it will be, because, for example, 
Many of you saw those cookie warnings on many of the websites. That's the result of the cookie law regulation, and it's so absurd sometimes that people are making fun of it. So this is, for example, one UK initiative which is daring UK regulator to actually sue them for uh, using cookies in an opposite way as the law defines. And of course, few years passed, but the regulator body didn't sue them. They just replied on the Twitter to them that that's the just first step. So we may, there is a risk that GDPR will end up some like joke, like the cookie law, but on the other hand, there is sign that, for example, this US guy is using our European legislation to actually fight for his, his right in the U United States. Because in United States, they don't have such regulations as, as in EU. So once your data is somewhere in the platform, like, for example, those social networks, you have no say in how it's used. So in last presiden presidential elections, what happened was that uh, one of the candidates hired a company the company did a lot of profiling of millions of uh, Americans, and based on that profiling, they were targeting advertisements, political advertisements. So based on who, how they identified you, they pushed a specific message for you. Of course, also Russians misused it, for example, as is being uncovered in the meantime, that they targeted specific groups and essentially ignited hatred for them with a specific message to, specific to this, to this uh, user group. So what this guy is trying to do is he's using UK court and UK legislation and EU legislation to come after this company and at, at least at first uncover what they actually did with the data and second of course is to make sure that next time it won't happen. And it's sort of twisted story because US guy is using EU law in UK court. UK, UK is actually exiting from EU. So funny story at the end maybe. So based on those concepts of my data and GDPR, essentially those are, let's say, basic rights the user can have with, uh, with his data. So first of all, he's deciding to put the data into some platform. That is nothing new, that is current state. We are putting a lot of data somewhere. In some cases, as again, some speakers told us yesterday, in regards to IoT, we are actually uploading data about ourselves somewhere, even without our knowledge and without our consent. So that's the first step. So what's important in GDPR context and my data context is that we have to know what the data about us is where and why, of course. Then we should be able to get a copy of the data. So it's our data, so we should be free to use it as we wish. And if we decide that, let's say, a certain platform has too much data about us and we do not like it, we should be able to delete it or ask them to delete it, but it's better to do a self-service and simply click a button and purge everything from out of it. Those rights or those concepts are already being recognized, not by just me or our project, but uh, there's already an uh, uh, initiative, mydata.org, uh, where companies, uh, academy, academic students, uh, individuals are signing to agree with the manifesto and uh, to uh, voluntarily certify that they will work toward this goal in their projects. So whoever is working on something like that can take a look, take, uh, read the declaration and maybe sign it. So my data features uh, currently, we have a prototype platform. I will give you the URL at the end of the presentation. Uh, so it's the basic features that I've mentioned you can register in. That's the first step when you give us some data because you choose some username, you choose some password, maybe you provide us with your name, maybe a photo, something like that. So that's the first pieces of uh, personal data you gave us. And uh, what we currently have in this bigger picture, those two uh, features are supposed to give you the ability to see what we have on you. So uh, we have the ability to weave the data. Essentially, you just click the link and you will see everything we have on, uh, about you. And of course, uh, just seeing is not enough. So we will have to uh, give you an uh, ability to actually download all the data in some machine readable form so that you can work with it. So let's take a look at some details. Uh, while implementing it. Uh, essentially, technologically speaking, who of you are programmers or developers? Okay, so 
if you take a look at the database, you have the tables, you have the IDs, you have the foreign keys, and uh, essentially the key piece here is user table. We have the table where we have all the users, and everything which is referencing this table regarding user ID is essentially data about you, because the reference is there for something, so f for some purpose. So. Uh, at first glance, it's very easy. We take all the information which is linked to your uh, user ID and we'll, we, we give it to you. On the other hand, we have to be careful because there might be some data which is about somebody else. And we have to be careful not to give it to you because you are not that somebody else. So you should see what is on you, but you shouldn't see what is on somebody else. How it looks in practice, let's say, uh, you posted a comment to my article, so of course you want the uh, comment be seen in your data package. But uh, the article is mine, so how to solve that? Well, our take here is that uh, my article is public, and at least under fair use, we can, let's say, include the title of my article along with some other minor details in your data package without, uh, argue, uh, or without violating my rights. So you will get the title of my article in your data dump so that you know to what relation your comment was and it's more useful to you. So uh, the view function is actually there to, so that you can take a quick look what is there and then based on that you can decide on the far direction. Like first thing you can decide is to actually download it to make an archive on your t computer or another thing you may decide you simply leave the platform, delete your profile and we delete all your data. So that's to give you a base for decision and some action. Currently, in the prototype, of course, we have the information about your user profile, all the articles you submitted to the platform, comments you submitted to the platform, some events which uh, were about you, like somebody followed you or somebody rated your article, uh, all the messages you've exchanged with some other users, information about who you are following and who is following you, and of course the content ratings you gave, uh, that's the current functions in the platform. So the data about this will be in your, let's say, data package. Uh, download all data is essentially same piece of information, but in a zip archive, in a machine readable of XML form, so that you can either just download it and make a backup on your computer, or if you have some use for it, for example, you can just strip out the articles and maybe post them somewhere else with the script. If you are a programmer, you can do that easily. If you are not a programmer, it is foreseen in the future that somebody maybe will create some tool for you. It's called data portability, so that we will be able to take data from our platform and move it to some other platform if you decide to do so. Uh, the download functionality is important that uh, it provides the machine uh, readable format so that uh, it's structured information and you don't lose anything and you can use software to work with the data. But uh, it's also made sure that you can still take a look. So if you uncompress the zip archive and open the HTML file which is there or XML file which is there, thanks to XLS starsheet and cascading starsheets, you still can have a ni nicer view than this. This is a machine, machine format, but if you open it in a browser, you will get something closer to this. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, so this is the view which you get if you open the downloaded data again in your browser. It, it will be offline copy, but you will get the same view. Okay, now I see it, fine. So what's the future? Uh, the portal is still under construction, so of course also this feature will evolve. We will try to make a bigger, bigger implementation so to address all the rights I've mentioned previously. Uh, but the most immediate thing we will be working on is to provide also REST API for this. For now, the use case was tied to you actually logging to the platform and clicking the buttons. But uh, if you are a programmer or some other service will be able to actually get the data from our platform, it will be need an, um, a machine-readable API, so we will provide the REST API for that. Of course, given that we are talking personal information, your data package it won't be available for free. You have to provide access, uh, access token. 
So the typical scenario would be like uh, today, if you install some application which interacts, for example, with Google services, you will go to Google's website, you will authenticate this application for you. In the background, they will exchange the tokens, and then the application, thanks to this token, will be having access to your Google data. So the same way here, if you authorize some application with our service, we will give them token, and based on the token, application can get your data and do some important stuff or useful stuff for you with your data. Uh, whoever is from some projects which might be interested to work on this, please get in touch. I would truly like to address also some portability, but that requires two parties. Our might be one. We need another party where we will be moving data to or moving data from them to us. Please get in touch if you know about something like that. Here are some promised references. So essentially what I talk about is also written in this uh, blog post. Here you can find the platform. It's a, let's say, beta, but uh, be careful, it's already uh, working. So if you are experimenting, be sure to understand that others see what you post there. So, and please try to be on topic. So if you are about financial literacy, try uploading content videos about finance and stuff like that. Uh, the source code for the platform will be released under EU PL license as an open source project next year. So. Uh, if we, I see you next year, I will invite you also to inspect the source code and, for example, make sure that what I was talking about in my data is actually also implemented so you can compare the data and you can compare the source code whether we are not cheating you. And that's all. Thank you. I was trying to be quicker so that we have either more time for questions or we can simply go to lunch sooner and beat the other guys. Okay, so do we have any questions from the audience? I actually have one in this case. Okay. So it's related to affiliated platforms. This is mostly an open project, but let's say we have a commercial platform which has commercial relationships expressed via cash versus data. Mm -hmm. How do we handle uh, how can the profit platform handle such a relationship, if there is any? For example, by for targeted advertising, let's say I would like to see who, which are the advertisement companies which are receiving my, my data. So have you considered conceptualized? Okay, so uh, right now we are not dealing with that as, as a project because that's, let's say, the stuff for further year to realize, let's say, how to make sure that project can continue. There are many options. First, one such option might be that you'll be actually selling some advertisement on the website, uh, and then it will be funded to continue and run on. Or another attempt to how to run it might be to be uh, simply use the partner we have right now, which is uh, Association of Ethical Banks. And if they see this platform as cool, they will continue to run it. But given that they are association, they will essentially do it from their own budget, and no advertising will be needed. And that will be much simpler because once we try to advertise, means uh, if we are going to do targeted advertising, we have to tell about the users to the advertiser, which means we are sharing some personal data with third party, and that's the actual scope of the GDPR. So right now, without GDPR, it's usually some small lawyer, lawyers speak hidden somewhere in the terms of service. That's the current situation. Usually nobody reads that. If, even if you read it, you don't understand it. So one of the points of the GDPR is that we need to explain to you what we are doing with your data. Again, you can take a look at the platform. We do have such pages there. And the GDPR is making sure that those pages should be short and understandable. So once we try to attempt this, we have to include in those pages very simple explanation like, we are doing this. We are using this kind of data about you for this, and we do it for this reason. And no lawyer speak. We need to explain so that average person understands it. So we will simply have to state that, like, okay, we are going to make money out of your, on your advertisement, so we will share your, let's say, country of origin, date of birth, with those three companies, for example. We will have to state it somewhere, human readable form, human understandable form. That's my understanding of GDPR. I'm not a lawyer, so beware of what I'm saying. Have you compared the GDPR regulations to what 
for example, big companies which have these affiliate networks are doing right now. For example, let's take the elephant in the room, Google or Facebook. So do they have such simple pages where they say, okay, we are using this, this, and this data for this and this purpose to this, this, and this affiliate company of ours? Well, as a user, I already, let's say, recognized some signs that those big companies are essentially aware of GDPR so that various warnings, apart from, let's say, cookie warnings, are also popping up on me as an EU citizen, like, if you are in EU, please read this. So I'm reading this, and I get like, okay, a lot of small, small uh, lawyering speak, so I don't understand, so they have to work on it still. That's first take. Of course, second take is, for example, if you read the news, then you know that Facebook got uh, almost 100 million fine from European Commission because they acquired WhatsApp application. And even though they previously made the promise they won't be sharing data between Facebook and WhatsApp, that's what they actually did right after the purchase. That's why the fine. And of course, the proceedings are all going because the fine was just the first step, like, do it wrong, give us 100 million, and then we will negotiate how you should do this further on. So uh, I think it depends on, for example, regulators. How will they actually perform and enforce these regulations? As the cookie law, that's for me not very good, good example how it should be tackled. So we will see because the EU body which is supposed to regulate this is just forming. And we we'll see next May how it will go. Fingers crossed about that one. Okay. Me personally, I'd like to learn this because this is essentially much simpler stuff to address at first. So for me, that's learning lesson. And then later on, for example, in Slovakia, there are plans for Eagle systems that by 2020, we will have my data feature there. So imagine some government portals you come to, you log in with your ID card, and then you get all the list of data government has on you. Of course, with some exception, maybe, of the secret service, but otherwise you should have the huge listing, like tax office has this on me, social security has this on me. So for me, it's a this is a preparation to, as an activist to step into this and make sure that uh, Slovak implementation will be useful and secure. Cool. So, for example, if we have in the intelligence business, they're called people of interest. Let's say the average user is not that interesting because he is not making any waves in the economy. But let's say I'm a big businessman. I'm doing a lot of stuff, some of which is controversial, risky, or downright illegal. So would that person be able to moderate what data the government, for example, has on them? Well, for me, it's a first step. At least in Slovakia. Uh... Once you have the My Data feature, let's say, and you have the overview of, uh, of course, at first, let's say in 2018, you won't have a complete picture of every company and every organization in the world, what they have on you. Of course, it won't happen next year. But at, le at least gradually, you will learn that, okay, at least Google will have to jump in, maybe Facebook, some other companies which are, let's say, major players in the market. Then, of course, maybe some smaller players or government players, and then the picture will start building. Like right now, the main problem is that a lot of people are not interested, first of all. Then second, even if they are interested, it's truly hard to explain because a lot of arguments are about speculations. Me, as an IT guy, I can speculate to some degree about what is possible to be collected, for example, in IoT or through basic web browsing and so on. But it's one way to argue my opinion and another way is if I have complete data dump, let's say, from Google or Facebook, and I can show it to you and see, and you can see what they actually truly have on you. So for, first step, it will be gradual, but later on we will have much better picture what is being collected, and then we can take some action and maybe make the regulations better to address what we uncover. Thank you. Okay, do we have... Yeah. You have a question? Sorry. Uh, okay. Do we have some questions from the audience? Asking first, twice, third? Or maybe okay. I have a question. Who is actually worried sure. about his personal data and privacy? 
Okay. So I can go out and say everybody's worried. I have statistical sample here. Yeah, 100 out of 100. Um, yeah, and it also depends oh, which parts of your personal data. Uh, does it make sense to be more worried about specific things uh, in your personal data than others? For example, do you own a car, yes or no? Well, that's individual. You have some people who prefer to wear tinfoil hats, and you have some people who actually don't care. And even if you explain to them like what is being known about them, they, okay. Depends. That's very personal, so maybe another finding from this will be in next few years that actually to what degree people do care about this stuff. For example, there was one blog which argued that uh, essentially privacy is a very recent uh, development, not older than 150 years. And before that, there was no privacy. People were having sex in public. People were taking dumps in the public without everybody caring. So that's just the invention of the modern times when we can actually afford our own homes with walls. Previously, it was not common, so people were together in one room, 10 or 20 people, and they have no privacy. So maybe that's where we are heading, that there will be no privacy, and what's now is my data will be later open data. I don't know.